Some of us, and I'm not gonna mention any names, love having a big rotation of shoes and others like to have a tighter, more versatile rotation where shoes can flex into different type of runs, can handle daily mileage, slower recovery runs, as well as long runs. So in this video, I'm gonna highlight some of the best, most versatile running shoes out there. Yes, for those of us who like to have a tight rotation, but also if you are a running shoe addict, these are the shoes that if you're like me, you'll take with you when you're traveling on the road. Those times where unfortunately you can only bring one or two or three out of your 36 shoes that you have in your closet. I've broken it out into plated shoes and non-plated shoes. So first I'll go over three options that are some of the best, most versatile non-plated shoes. And then I'll highlight three of the best, most versatile plated trainers. The reason I did this is that there are a lot of new plated trainers out there that are really great versatile shoes. So I wanted to make sure we got some of those non-plated shoes in there as well, because if you've watched this channel, you know, I believe that running in non-plated shoes is super important to the development of your lower leg muscles and to your strength as an overall runner. So it's great to have some of these versatile non-plated shoes to support your training. All right, guys, before we get into it, I want to mention the running shoe matcher tool. I built a really cool tool where you can answer a few questions on your goals and preferences and we'll match you with a good running shoe for you. So you go in there, you put in what type of shoe do you want? Do you want a daily trainer, a tempo shoe, a race day shoe? Do you like your shoes to feel soft or firm? Do you need a stability in your shoe? And we'll match you with some of the best running shoes based on your criteria. So go to runningshoematcher.com to check that out. All right, let's get into it. All right guys, first up in the non-plated versatile shoe segment, we have the Hoka Mach 5. Now, what makes this such a great versatile shoe is the underfoot feel of this foam. So if you take a look at this blue and orange foam we have here, this is a super critical foam called Pro Fly Plus. It's really soft. It feels nice and comfortable and cushioned underfoot. And this white layer is a firmer EVA based foam. They don't have a name for it, but it's just a firmer traditional EVA that's gonna provide a bit more structure and stability into the platform. Now, if you take a look at the geometry here, this Hoka Mach 5 is a rocker shoe shoe. So you, as you land, it rolls you through and really encourages you to have a nice smooth ride. Now, I've heard some people compare this to the old Nike Pegasus Turbo, which again, had this really nice sensation that felt great at slower paces and felt great at faster paces. And where this really excels is because it has a softer foam paired with that rocker, it can do that slower stuff really well because again, it's not pushing you to pick up the pace too much because the foam can absorb that impact at a slower pace but when you want to pick up the pace that rocker does a nice job at being able to support some of that faster work too now the one downside to the hoka mach 5 is it does not have an outsole so if you look at the wear on this so far i have about 200 miles on it and you can see i've worn this outsole tread that we have on the, the foam pretty much down flat. You're not gonna get as many miles out of this as you would for some of these other shoes on this list because there's no rubber on here. So if part of the reason that you want a versatile shoe is to be more economical, to save money, to get more miles out of one shoe, Mach 5 might not be the best for that, but if you're gonna manage a two or three shoe rotation, this is a really good shoe to mix in there. That, that'll help you get more, at least time out of it in the long run. All right, guys, next in the non-plated versatile shoe category, we have the Nike Pegasus. The Pegasus is a classic daily trainer. It has this React foam that's not super bouncy, but it is really comfortable underfoot, and there's no crazy rocker geometry on it. So in contrast to that Hoka Mach 5 where it would roll you along, this Pegasus doesn't really do that. It has more of a ground contact feel in that forefoot, and it feels a bit more traditional than some of the other shoes here. What makes it so versatile is that because it doesn't have any of these crazy new technological elements that people are introducing into shoes like bouncy piva foam or a massive rocker it does the job pretty well at a bunch of different things so it's about a six out of ten or a seven out of ten at everything it does right you can go slow in it because it doesn't have a massive rocker you can go fast in it because it doesn't have a huge stack of foam that's weighing you down it's just a really solid shoe that will execute pretty well for everything you want it to do it's not going to blow you out of the water in any one category but that's the beauty of a versatile shoe it just gets it done where you need it to and in contrast to that hoka mach 5 this one does have a really nice outsole very thick covering of rubber so you can get 500 600 700 miles out of a shoe like this if you really want to push it there 
All right, guys, last in the non-plated versatile shoe category, we have the New Balance Rebel V3. Now, this one has the lowest stack out of any of these shoes I've highlighted here, but the reason why I love it as a versatile shoe is because this soft fuel cell foam that we have in the midsole here, it feels a bit more cushioned, a bit higher stack than it really is just because of how soft it is. I've done everything from 10 minute pace recovery runs in this all the way up to a 400 meter interval at sub five minute mile pace. It really can do the job for everything. And like that Nike Pegasus, it doesn't have a crazy rocker in it. So it is gonna be a nice natural more natural feeling shoe than something like the Hokamok 5 or some of these other plated shoes we're highlighting here. So if you want a shoe that's really gonna support a solid, strong training block where you're building up those lower leg muscles while still being fun to run in, and that's the key with this here, it is really fun to run in without having a rocker or a huge stack of foam. I would highly recommend this as that next versatile shoe for you. This is also gonna be lighter weight than any of the other shoes, which is a great thing, coming in at 7.1 ounces, which helps it feel nice and fast for any of those runs where you're pushing the pace to 10K, 5K zone. And then for those recovery efforts, even though it isn't a massive stack of foam, because of that lighter weight, it's a bit easier to have on foot for a long and slow recovery run. All right, guys, now let's dive into some plated shoes. As I mentioned at the top, there are a ton of great versatile plated shoes. I highlighted three of the best ones out there, and you can pick and choose from these based on what your preference is. So first up, we have the Hoka Mach X. Now the Hoka Mach X is essentially a plated version of the Mach 5 that we showed, but instead of having that super critical EVA foam that they had on the Mach 5, it uses a PIBA foam on the top layer. That's gonna make it feel a bit bouncier, a bit faster, and a bit more energy return than we're getting in the traditional Mach 5. The Mach X also has a plastic plate in there, which again is gonna help with some energy return, gonna help with some of that bouncy feeling, and also stay stabilizing that super soft PIBA foam that we have. Unlike a lot of the other plated trainers out there, the Mach X does not have a super aggressive feel. It's more of a smooth sensation that just helps you clip along those miles. This is gonna be great for long runs as well as easier, slower runs where you want a bit more help than you'd get from a non-plated or a lower stack shoe. All right, guys, next up, we have a fan favorite, which is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Now, this is designed by Saucony as a faster up-tempo shoe, but it's been adopted by the running community as almost a daily trainer style shoe. Now here's why. Yes, it does have a Piva midsole foam. Yes, it does have a plastic plate in there, but it also has this feeling where it's like the Mach X, a bit softer, not as aggressive as you get from a carbon fiber plated shoe. So for those everyday miles, it just makes it feel a bit more fun without being too harsh or aggressive like you get from a traditional carbon fiber plated shoe. Now the downside of running in something like this all the time is like I mentioned at the top, you might not be building out as much lower leg strength. I also felt like this is a tad soft for my personal preference. I like a bit firmer of a feel for my daily training miles. And it also feels like I'm, I don't know, spoiling myself by running in something like this all the time because it makes it very easy to run. So it doesn't feel like I'm developing as much as a runner as I could be if I were running in a shoe. That doesn't make it that easy to run. But very fun shoe, one of my favorite long run shoes. I used this in the winter when I was running in more plated shoes for my faster long run efforts with the Triumph for my slower, more relaxed long run efforts. This is also the type of shoe that you could race in and could be a very viable racer for a runner who doesn't want a carbon fiber plated shoe. The one area where this probably falls a little bit short when we think about versatility is for recovery runs. Because it has that power run PB midsole foam with that plastic plate, with a nice rocker. It's not gonna be the most comfortable at slower paces. It is one of those shoes that encourages you to have a more of a high turnover. So I would suggest not using this for true recovery run efforts, but you can, you could use it for those everyday running miles, long runs and workouts. All right guys, finally, in the most versatile plated shoes category, we have the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. Now, unlike the Mach X and the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, the Deviate Nitro has a carbon plate. So those first two shoes had plastic plates. The carbon plate in here is gonna give it a bit more of a firm underfoot feel, but that is balanced out with, again, it has a Piva foam on the top and then a dual foam layer with that EVA on the bottom, similar to the Hoka Mach X. This shoe is almost the complete opposite of that Hoka Mach 5 that we highlighted in the non-plated shoe section because this has a really solid outsole covering of Puma Grip. Now Puma Grip is known as one of the grippiest, most durable outsoles in the biz. 
So if you are looking for a plated, reliable, versatile shoe because you want to get a ton of miles out of one shoe and not manage a big rotation, then Deviate Nitro is going to be a good choice. I also think this tends to give a bit less of that super helping you run type of feel. You still do have to do more of the work of running in this than in something like the Mach X or Speed 3. The Rocker is a bit less aggressive, has a bit of a firmer underfoot feel. All right, guys, so there you have it. Those are some of the best, most versatile running shoes out there. As always, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, and I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.